Four races into a crucial 2024 F1 season that was meant to propel Daniel Ricciardo back into a dream Red Bull racing seat. He is instead starting to relive a previous nightmare in McLaren. It's definitely not the start he'd been hoping for at Red Bull's second team RB and it seems like he's finally coming to terms with the scary reality. Why is Ricardo struggling and what has humbled him so much that he's no longer dreaming of driving alongside Max Verstappen but rather hopes to keep driving in F1 in general? For those who may have missed the Australian or Japanese Grand Prix, spoiler alert, both were terrible for the Honey Badger. At the Australian Grand Prix, Daniel Ricciardo's home race, Yuki Tsunoda outperformed him in both qualifying and the race, securing a 7th place finish and valuable points for himself and RB. And at the Japanese Grand Prix, Tsunoda this time drove in front of his home crowd and despite a closer competition with Ricciardo qualifying 11th and Tsunoda 10th, the latter's performance was much better simply because Ricciardo's race ended prematurely due to a collision he was was technically at fault for involving Alex Albon. Meanwhile, Sonoda, though facing initial setbacks, displayed remarkable resilience with impressive overtakes, ultimately securing points at his home Grand Prix. This performance secured him his seventh point in the 2024 Drivers' Championship, a notable improvement compared to last year's results and especially against Ricardo, the driver who aims for a Red Bull seat but his furthest possible from it after his first four races of the season. Given he felt at the limit of the car, Ricardo wanted more checks to be conducted because he's not fully convinced it's working as it should be. The situation strangely echoes his concerns during Monaco in 2021, where he collided with the barriers, attributing his struggles to potential car issues. However, subsequent assessments by McLaren revealed it was more about his driving style than any mechanical faults, which significantly impacted his confidence and reputation, leading to his premature departure from the team. Presently, it's uncertain if Ricardo is facing a similar dilemma with his current car, struggling to match his teammates' pace or grappling with hidden mechanical issues. And despite his efforts to remain composed and focused, there's an underlying sentiment of seeking answers and striving for improvement reflecting a delicate balance between confidence and doubt in his abilities and the machinery at his disposal. Ricardo's season hasn't started as strongly as he hoped and the recent remarks from Red Bull advisor Helmut Marko about him needing to step up are now adding to the pressure. This is disappointing considering the initial optimism that Ricardo could rediscover his peak form in Formula One, a prospect that now seems more distant than ever since his return midway through last year. Red Bull entered the season with multiple options for Max Verstappen's teammate in 2025, and while Sergio Perez seemed like the preferred choice, especially with team principal Christian Horner indicating the seat was his to lose, Perez's contract ending in 2024 means he has much to prove especially after his inconsistent performance in 2023, despite Verstappen's title-worthy efforts. Ricardo was seen as a potential replacement for Perez, given his status as a Horner favourite and his good relationship with Verstappen. However, Ricardo's underwhelming performance compared to Perez, who also struggled in Melbourne, has complicated matters. Carlos Sainz's victory in Melbourne and subsequent praise from Horner have put him in contention for a 2025 five seat, particularly as a free agent after his release from Ferrari. And knowing this, Ricardo has stated that surprisingly, he would happily stay in RB as he's enjoying driving now without the pressure. This is strangely what Marco stated, but it seems there is something going on behind the scenes that will soon surface. When asked if he would be happy to remain with his current team, Ricardo responded, as I feel today, yes, I'm enjoying the driving now. It's not so much result driven. Obviously, I don't want to just be here to be here. I want to earn that seat and the team is hopefully further up. So yeah, I guess it goes both ways. I mean, the answer is yes. But is it more fun fighting at the front? Is it more fun fighting for podiums and wins? 
absolutely. And the truth is, if I draw a line under it and I speak about myself in the third person, why did Daniel Ricciardo return after a few months off last year? Because I believe I can stand on the podium again. I can win races again. Daniel Ricciardo's bid to break his slow start to the 2024 season could be boosted by a chassis change scheduled for the upcoming Chinese Grand Prix. Racing director Alan Permain has stressed that the fresh chassis was being constructed anyway and hasn't been built because of any doubts over Ricciardo's current car. But this is nevertheless a sign that the team, despite comments from Marco that might have been interpreted as putting Ricciardo under pressure, still believe in the Australian and will support him until the superiors in Red Bull decide to sack him. However, Horner and Helmut Marco must weigh in other things, and that is whether retaining Ricardo justifies keeping Liam Lawson on the sidelines. Lawson's success last year poses a big potential threat to Ricardo's position within the team, and while the dilemma of accommodating three drivers into two seats was resolved in favour of Ricardo and Sonoda for 2024, Red Bull has committed to finding Lawson a race seat by 2025 at the latest. This further adds complexity to Red Bull's internal power dynamics. Ricardo is seen as Horner's choice. Tsunoda represents Honda's interests and Lawson is highly regarded by Marco, who advocated for his inclusion in the team for 2024. And while Marco has shown pressure on Ricardo and Tsunoda, it appears likely that his ultimate goal is to secure a seat for Lawson, potentially at Ricardo's expense. The question is now whether this situation will escalate to the point of Ricardo being replaced, which seeing the latest comments and what RB does to support him probably won't. Whether Horner, Rebel Management or the parent company sees it this way remains uncertain, but nevertheless Ricardo himself maintains his focus and motivation, which is how it should be. One intriguing aspect of this situation is that the driver outperforming Ricardo might not reap immediate benefits. Initially, there was speculation that Tsunoda and Ricardo could inadvertently hinder each other's careers, particularly as Tsunoda had yet to earn Red Bull's full confidence due to concerns about his self-control and tendency to make errors. Therefore, if Ricardo didn't excel against Tsunoda, it wouldn't significantly impact his standing. However, given the numerous doubts surrounding Ricardo's performance, Tsunoda's edge over him wouldn't necessarily bolster his own prospects either. It was conceivable that both drivers could end up with Red Bull showing little interest in retaining them beyond 2024. Australia marked a positive turn for Tsunoda in response to Marco's prodding, with Marco himself praising Tsunoda afterwards, and the race at Suzuka helped the Japanese driver even more, but mostly because of Ricardo's error and not his own driving. However, doubts persist about Tsunoda's chances of securing a Red Bull racing seat in the future, despite Marco's admiration for his speed. Marco's frustrations with Tsunoda's emotional outbursts are evident, and Horner's recent comments redirecting attention away from Tsunoda towards other potential candidates like Carlos Sainz also underscore this. Tsunoda may find himself in a holding pattern until his primary backer, Honda departs from the Red Bull teams for Aston Martin in 2026. At that point, unless there's a significant shift, Tsunoda's prospects within Red Bull's stable seem pretty bleak. However, Tsunoda remains determined to prove himself and increase his value as an F1 driver and beating Ricardo this season would of course bolster his case, though it may not change his fate with Red Bull all that much. Nonetheless, it would erode any remaining confidence in Ricardo, further emphasising Tsunoda's potential as a competitive driver worthy of a place on the grid. Every race from now until at least the summer break, Ricardo must treat it like a cup final. 
all eyes will be on him to deliver and not make silly errors like the one in Japan. The upcoming race in China could be a very decisive moment for Daniel as he has to show he has a pulse by accumulating points and perform really well on the track, starting by simply beating his teammate. It's very essential for him now to buy himself as much time as possible while this bad period is ongoing, if it is a bad period and not something else. If his performances don't improve, it's possible that he could find himself in a situation similar to Lance Stroll, where personal connections rather than on-track results dictate his future in the sport. Do you think Ricardo can bounce back? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. We'll see you very soon in the next video.